Hello guys, welcome back to Data Run. Today we'll be discussing data analysis with Python. Basically, we'll be using Python libraries to get insight and meaning from a particular data set. So we'll be using libraries like NumPy, like Pandas, like Matplotlib, and like Seaborn to see how we can get basic insight from a particular data set. So you don't want to miss it. So stay tuned. All right, so this is the data set we'll be considering for today's analysis. So you can see here that um, the dataset is gotten from Kegel and the title of the dataset is medical appointment no shows. So why do 30% of patients miss their scheduled appointment? This was a Kegel competition that was done about three years ago, as we can see here. And yeah, so I think it was more like a classification problem. However, we are just gonna use this dataset for analysis. The content basically contains about 110,527 medical appointments and it has like 14 variables which we'll be using for our analysis and these are the variables we have the patient id which identifies the patient appointment id the gender scheduled date in the actual data while this is the appointment date in the actual data the age of the patients the neighborhood where the appointment takes place and the scholarship this is basically if the person is on scholarship like scholarship to receive that treatment or not and if the person has any of these diseases these are more like um, boolean values true or false or binary values one or zero so if the person has any of this and sms received is basically if the person received any sms as um, a reminder for his or her appointment and the no show basically represents if the patient showed up or not so if it is yes that means the person did not show up but if it is no it means the person showed up. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to drop the link to this particular competition so you can also get the data and we can do it together. So this data I'll be using, I've already gotten the data and um, I'm just going to load it into my Jupyter Notebook. So I'll be using Jupyter Notebook for my analysis. Let's create a new notebook for our analysis. Like I said, we'll be using different Python libraries. Basically, I mentioned four and that's what we'll be using. So we are going to import all of those libraries in here. So the next thing to do is to get the data that we'll be using. So this is the file right now, and we can see the patient ID, which automatically identifies a particular patient, the appointment ID, and then the gender of the patient, the schedule date, this is the day the person actually booked an appointment, and the appointment day is the actual day for the appointment, and then we have the age of the patient, the neighborhood, where the person is booking from and these are if the person has like a scholarship or not and all of this all of these diseases if the person has all of this or not is basically one or zero and if the person also received an sms or not the sms is served as a reminder like the person has an appointment or if the person didn't receive it so it's basically like a binary thing one or zero and then we also have like the no show the no show basically signifies if the person showed up like earlier said or not so it's either a yes or no so let's check the information basically for our data so df.info basically gives you more information about the data so from here we can see that the entire data has no null values and so it means all the data set is totally complete and we don't have nulls in this data so we are not going to be dealing with nulls yeah but we are going to be dealing with some other things as we can see the data type of the data we can see float we can see integer we can see object now object in pandas could be strings mostly are strings strings are known as objects and then we have like the integers and float so from here we have basically three types of data type which is floats integers and objects which are like basically strings and from here it doesn't really look like all of our data type should be like this because like um, the schedule date or the schedule day and appointment they should basically have like a date time format so that we can do a lot more analysis on that so these are things we need to change so basically we'll change the data type of this that is something we should take note of so the df that described basically tells us the spread of our numerical values from the data you can actually see the distribution of your data like our age we can see that the count is this which basically all of them have the same count because there are no null values in any of them and then we can also see that the mean is 37 for the age standard deviation is this and then the minimum value is minus one 
there is an issue with this because the age cannot be negative so that means it's something we need to look out for and we can see all of this too so basically the scholarship the hypertension all the binary data it's basically cool so there was something i forgot so i also want to add like a magic function for matplot library so that once we plot our graphs it will display just underneath the cell and not on a new window so that's what that magic function basically does so now that we've seen the description of our data it looks like from the information and from the description we have like a few cleaning to do in our data so basically we want to change the data type of the schedule day and the appointment day to date type functions and we also want to look out for the age column that basically has minus one as age as a minimum value with this is actually wrong so we need to look this up so we need to clean that so those are like the basic data cleaning steps we will do before we start exploring and do proper visualization with our data okay so we'll start by fixing our age data and basically we'll do this by querying the data and taking out only values that have age either greater or equals to zero so we are going to have all positive and no negative value for age so in doing this we just basically use df.query and we take the age variable and we say we want our age to be equals to or greater than zero and we want to put it in the same data frame that it is so we say in place equals true okay so the next thing we are going to do now is to be able to change the data type of our schedule day and our appointment day to date time functions and in doing that we are going to be using pandas to date time method to change it all right so that should change it and so we are just going to do same to the appointment day or basically we can just add it on the same cell so this will basically change our date type to what we want so if we do df.info again we're going to notice that the date type has changed all right so we see that the date type for this has changed to date time from string so and then if we also try to run our df.describe we will notice that our age the minimum value is zero and no longer minus one so we have just positive values right now so yeah so those are like the basic cleaning that we notice we're going to do on this but i believe as we go into the data we are we'll have need to do a lot more cleaning so yeah we can just basically also check the size of our data right now and we can see that we have 100 and 10,526 rows and then 14 columns. Okay, so now that we're done with this, the next thing that we want to do is we want to bin most of our continuous variables, continuous variables like um, age, and we just want to bin it, like when I mean bin, it's more like group the data into like ranges, like from zero to this, from this to that, and from that to that so we want to bin our age but we want to because we might have need to bin other values much later so we might want to write a function for that we've defined that function now so we want to basically bin our age variables so basically before this I think we need to define what our bin would be for age and then what the labels would also be so one thing I like doing when I want to bin the value I actually make use of this df the describe variable and each of the portal ranges to be in my value so basically i start from the minimum to this to the 25th percentile to the 50th percentile to the 75th percentile and then max or anything above that so that will basically be in our data so we can put it back into the function beans and then levels so yeah so that runs fine so if we check our data right now there's the data that info we're gonna see our new label age bind and this is it so we might also want to you know look into the data and be like okay so let's see the beans that we did right so we can do df.h band Dot value counts yeah so it basically shows the distribution of our data so 0 to 17 we have about 28,000 or about 29 there about 50, 55 and above we have about 27 so it is 
greatly distributed. This is the reason why I like using the interquartile ranges for my binnings. So we've been the age column right now. Also looking at this, so we've added like a new column to this, which is age band. But I'm also very interested in the time difference between the schedule day and the appointment day. So do we have people that schedule today and then the schedule, the schedule day is actually today and then the appointment day is that same day? Or do we have what's like the difference and how does this also affect if they show up for the appointment or not? So the next thing is we want to find the difference between these two columns and we will title that days difference but we also want it to be in days so because we want it to be in days we are going to change the type to be as that of days okay so we have it now so now we've found the difference between the appointment day and the scheduled day so yeah we might want to run like our df dot describe once again to see the spread of that data and let's see how widespread the days difference are. So these are the days difference. And we have the mean to be 9.18. Wow. And then the maximum value is 178. Wow. So that means we have like loads of values that are actually less than the mean. So yeah, so we have like the minimum value to be minus 7. This is interesting. And the 25th percentile to be minus one and then the half mark is 3.0 and then the 75th percentile to be 14 yeah and then the maximum value to be 178 so we have like from this it looks like we have like a lot of data between that are less than actually minus three we have more than 50 percent of the data fall into that Yes, and that's quite interesting. But then again, we have like the days difference, which is negative, and this is not supposed to be so. So we need to look into that to be able to determine why that is happening. So to do that, we're just going to do, we're going to find the value count for days difference. So we have minus one, having like most of the values here, 38,000. And then we have one, okay, three, zero. All right, great. And then we also have minus seven, which is quite interesting. Okay, so we need to see values that are basically less than zero. All right, so the unique values are we have minus one, minus two, minus seven. These are the unique values that are basically less than zero. All right, so we basically see that a lot of values fall into the minus one category. So let's also look at the values that are actually, you know, have minus two and minus seven. So we can actually break down to those ones and start dealing with that. So we have about five values that are less than minus one. So let's check the, the schedule day and the appointment date. So we see that the appointment date for this is 9th of May 2016 and the schedule day is 10. So this data is basically wrong because the appointment day is meant to be ahead of the schedule day. But however, th there's a difference in this particular rule. Same thing applies to this, same as this. So this data is basically wrong. So we need to vary our data without these ones. All right, so we've gotten rid of this. So if we run this again, we are not going to have any value, but we still have minus one. And it's good for us to look at the values with minus one. So let's look at the ones less than zero, which will basically be the ones that are like minus one. So we can see that the scheduled day is 29. The appointment day is 29. However, the time here is less and it basically looks like the time for the appointment day here it's not fixed so this could mean that it was actually scheduled on the same day but the time wasn't taking notes for the appointment the appointment time wasn't really stated but the day was stated and the person booked at this and this is much later than this so that's why we have the minus one so in this scenario i think it to be safe for me to try to change the day's difference that are minus one to basically zero because it's the same day and assume we're just using the day to do the subtraction yeah so basically that's what i'm going to do in this case all right so that's being fixed now so we've taken care of the negative values in the day's difference and basically all what we have 
in the days difference column right now should be all positive so let's look at it we can look at it using the f dot describe we're doing this just to confirm that everything we are doing is actually being noted in the data frame so we can see our days difference is actually like zero so we don't have negative values anymore it would be good if we bin it so let's state our bins and labels for this particular data and just like just like i stated when we're considering the age i basically like using these properties to state my beans so we have it so we can also check the value count yeah so we have about 58,000. this is almost like 50 percent of the data fall between zero to two days and then we have the next one have like 26,000 and about 26,000 for three days up basically let's go back over what we've done so we've created an age band yeah and then we've also created a day's difference band which is actually the difference between the scheduled day and the appointment day so we can actually see how that influences on if a patient shows up or not and try to get some insights into that data all right so we already have the appointment day and the scheduled day but we also want to change this to like day of the week so we can know the exact day of the week that the person actually made a schedule and the exact day of the week that the appointment was made currently we just have like dates and yeah so we just have like that so we don't know if this was on a monday or on a tuesday or on a wednesday or on a thursday so that is what we want to get so we want to change our or try to get extract the day of the week from our appointment and schedule days so that's it for the appointment so we're just going to do same but using schedule day just to be able to get that too so we've gotten our appointment day and our schedule days so let's look at our data frame Let's try to look at the first 10 cells. So we see here that so our appointment day we have like four scheduled days. So these are like numbers four to yeah. So what I just did basically just changes this to day of the week. But the day of the week is basically like in numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 6. And each of those numbers represent like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this numbers basically represent zero stands for Monday and one stands for Tuesday and there it goes till six is Sunday. In order to also make it like readable, so I think it would be good for me to change all of these to those days exactly so we can understand what we're reading. So I'm just going to write a function and I will title that function day name from weekday so this function should actually take in the weekday but first of all I want to define that days equals I'll just make a list of Monday to Sunday a particular attention starting with Monday because I know that this actually also takes zero to be Monday so if I want to use like zero indexing I want zero to still be Monday so we don't mess up the data I've written the days and so I'm just going to create an empty list. Now, basically what this does is it's going to take in the weekday in numbers. So I created an empty list here and I say for the day in each of these weekdays. So let's say you're picking up four here. So it should append. It should basically pick this four and try to index it in this day so if it's four here it's going to come zero one two three four and it's going to pick like a friday and append it here i'm going to return the days with that function i should be able to change my appointment day of the week to you know from this to this so very quickly just before we do same for the scheduled data you might want to look at it right now. So let's do df.info and let's look at the first 10 values. Sorry, I wanted to do head here. So looking at the first 10 values here, you can see that the appointment day of the week, it's all Friday for this. All four is like Friday. So because zero, one, two, three, four, the fourth index is Friday. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to achieve. So I'm going to do same with scheduled day of the week. Right. So that works right now. Now there's something very important that I also want to share. So when we want to start plotting our data um, and then we want to plot using like this appointment day of the week, it's very likely that it will try to order the data alphabetically. So if we have like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 
Friday, you might want to bring Friday first and try to order it alphabetically. So in order for us to avoid that and ensure that Monday comes first, Tuesday comes second, we might want to leverage on a pandas method categorical to be able to, you know, ensure that we have that which we want. So in doing that, we're just going to use that method on these, on these uh, columns so that we can at the ensure that Monday it comes first and Saturday or Sunday comes last and it will mess up when we're trying to plot our graphs. And then we set our categories to be the days that we already stated, which is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, so we are also going to set that we want it ordered. So we are going to do same with schedule. So that should be great. So now we've done a bit of transformation on our data and we've added like new variables like the age band, you see the groupings here and then we've seen like the days different difference between the appointment day and the scheduled day and then the appointment day of the week. We can actually see the day of the week and then the scheduled day of the week. So we can actually see this. So at this point, I think um, I feel our data to some extent, it's ready for us to be able to get some insight out of it. So I think it's time for us to dive in and basically most of the insights, it's quite interesting if you try to visualize it. Yeah, because you'll be able to see the magic almost immediately once you can visualize it. Yeah, so let's get there now. From our data, we only have like um, two continuous variables, which is um, age and days different. So we just want to plot it using scatter plot. Scatter plot is very nice if we want to plot two continuous variables to just see if there is like a relationship between them oh yeah so this is it so we can basically see that there really isn't an obvious relationship between both of them so this doesn't really have like a unique relationship so the age of the person doesn't actually tell the number of days it would take between the schedule day and the appointment day so there's really no relationship from what we can see here also to get and rid of this, you might also want to add like semicolon to your plot. So in this case, I'll just add a semicolon there and you'll notice that that will be gone. So first of all, just try to look at the characteristic between, you know, the appointment day and the no show, which actually tells if the patient showed up or the patient did not show up. So we are going to group by that. Now we can see our appointment day of the week and how many people turn up. So. We notice that people that had appointment on, on Monday, most of them showed up, yeah. So in each of the days, most of them always show up, yeah. From this, it looks like the days that have the highest number of people that don't show up is on Tuesday. So we also kind of see that, I mean, Saturday, we actually do not have, um, you know, people that actually booked appointment on this day and that's for Sunday and for Saturday, we have very few. And it looks as if as it approaches the weekend, it kind of drops. So basically, we have more appointments between the first 30 days of the week, Monday to Wednesday. And then as it goes towards weekend, it begins to drop. And Sunday is like, no, basically, maybe because no doctor actually is available for appointments on this day. So let's also try to visualize this. And I'll be using Seaborn in this. I'll be using count plots, which will basically just count. It's just basically what I've showed here, but it would be nice if we see it in a chart as it to give more insights or more clarification to what we, you know, want to see. Yeah, so this basically takes in the X axis, what you want. And then the here is basically what you want to, you know, the difference in the data that you're visualizing, how you want to show that. And then it takes in the data frame. And we, we also just want to set the title of the graph or the chart and also set like the label. So now that we've set our title, the chart title, and then the title of the, you know, the Y axis and the X axis. So let's visualize. So also, like I said, it's good for you to put the semicolon if you don't want those things showing up. Great. So we can see that we have a lot of appointments coming up between Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we have fewer ones Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, it's actually very low. Sunday, we don't even have anyone from here, yeah. And then we have very few on Saturday. So we kind of see like we have a lot of appointments on Wednesday. So Wednesday seems to be the day that people schedule a lot of appointments. And from after Wednesdays, Tuesdays, like the next before Monday, and Friday and Thursday seems to be pretty low in the weekday. And then the weekends are like 
pretty much very low. So we might also want to consider, I mean, the same thing that we've considered on using appointment day of the week, also figuring it out with different other variables. So we are going to consider the age band. So age band, we see patients with the age between 0 to 17. Yeah, they actually show up a lot more. 18 to 20 to 36, almost like the same thing. But we've also noticed like the difference between patients who show up to the appointment and those who miss between 55 plus seems to be lower. The percentage of patients that miss out on appointments is lower for the elderly ones compared to the younger ones. And I mean, this could mean that maybe they take their health a lot more seriously because maybe at an older age, you're much more vulnerable. So they don't really want to be missing doctor's appointments or any appointment that they have with regards to their health. So let's also visualize this. Great. So we can see, so we kind of see like we have a lot of people that falter and not show up for appointments between 18 and 36. This is really like the young population. So maybe they take their health a little bit less seriously compared to the older ones. So we see as they, as they keep going in age, the rate at which they miss their appointments is becoming gradually reduced. And this could mean like the elderly ones really take their health a lot more seriously. This is interesting. All right, so let's look at some other um, variable and also see how that plays out. So let's look at for people that also got SMS. So people with SMS received, we're going to be considering the SMS received. Okay, so people that did not receive the SMS have a higher number of people that did not show up compared to people that received the SMS. All right, so generally we have few people who received sms compared to people who did not receive sms right but then the we also notice that if we look at it like people that receive sms we kind of have a higher population of people that did not show up compared to people who did not receive they have like a lower population of people who did not show up just considering them as a whole but if we want to consider both of these together like people that received the SMS and people that did not receive the SMS. We noticed that people that did not receive the SMS had higher number of people that did not show up compared to people that received the SMS. So it could mean that the SMS actually served as a reminder to patients so they could actually meet up the appointment. Well, I mean, that's just like um, some kind of, you know, thing we can say from the data, but we cannot be too sure, but it looks like it from the data. So let's also consider patients that also got um, scholarship. So for those that their health is basically being paid for and for those that pay for their health themselves. So let's see how that affects the way they show up for appointments. All right. So the people that did not receive any scholarship, the ratio of which is show up for the appointment is actually higher compared to the ratio of people that receive scholarship and how they show up for appointment. This is basically like one of our four of the people that received scholarship actually do not show up for the appointment. So we can basically say one out of every four person on scholarship will not show up for their doctor's appointment. While it is more like one over eight here, it looks like patients that show up for appointments, if they are on scholarship, there is a, a lower probability that they will show up, but if they are not on scholarship, there is a higher possibility that they will show up for the appointment. So you can also try to plot this to, to see how that goes. So we also consider like the day's difference. Let's see how that actually affects people showing up. So what, like if I schedule today and the day difference between my schedule day and the appointment day is like zero, is it more likely that I will show up or is it less likely? All right, so look at the age difference. So with the days difference, sorry about that. So zero to two, we have like a lot of people book the appointments and also go for it between two days. Well, we have very few people do from 14 up. And then people that book between the first two days tend to always show up for the appointment. Tend to, yeah, we have like a lower falter rate because we have like about 6,000 out of 58,000 people that don't show up compared to the other ones which have like a higher rate of people not showing up. So this could mean that if I book my appointment on a day that is very close, like two days, between zero to two days from the day I'm scheduling, it is very likely that I will remember and I would go for my appointment or 
my calendar will basically be cleared. It could mean like anything, but basically it looks like people that book within the first two days actually go for their appointment. So let's also try to visualize that also. So we have like a lot of people showing up between the first two days compared to every other day. So, I mean, we're already beginning to get some insights from this data. We're already beginning to add one or two, like people on scholarship are most likely not to go for the appointments. People that their age are actually a bit advanced. They actually go for the appointment. So we can actually see that we are getting a lot of insights from this data already. So last thing that we're going to consider is we want to also look at the scheduled day of the week and the appointment day of the week and how that impacts on the patient showing up for the appointment or not. All right, so we can see for people, this is people that showed up and these are for people that did not show up. So we see the people that scheduled on Monday, basically Monday, this is like the legend. So we can tell this is Monday, this is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. So people that booked on, scheduled on Monday, which is Monday is like their scheduled day. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't title this properly. So let me change that so we don't get confused. So we notice that people that are scheduled on Monday, we have like a very high number of people that showed up on Monday too. So people that are scheduled like on the same day actually showed up more. Then the next thing was people that actually scheduled on Monday and the appointment was for Wednesday. They also showed up a lot more. But if you notice from this chart, people that scheduled the appointment and they are scheduled on the same day actually show up a lot more compared to any other day. So it is very likely that if you schedule on the same, if you fix your appointment on the same day as your scheduled day, there is a very high possibility that you would show up. Actually, that's what this is basically telling us. So, I mean, in conclusion, we can, from the analysis we've done, we can say that elderly people actually take their health more seriously and therefore they don't miss any, you know, appointments with the doctor. And we also notice that people that have the same schedule and appointment, they tend to show up more for the appointment. And we also see that people that receive like SMS seem to, you know, go for their, you know, their appointments compared to people that don't receive SMS, which could mean that the SMS serves a lot more as a reminder. And then we also, um, we've not really paid attention to the diseases and how it affects people showing up. And that can be something that you can actually do and add, like an, you can expand on this. So yeah, so that's that. And thank you very much. I think this has really um, made sense. We've been able to get some form of insight from this data. And I believe it has been helpful. And you might want to build a lot more on that or do like a lot more of exploration. This was just very basic. So you might want to expand more on that. I'm going to put a link to this notebook and I'm also going to put a link to the data source where I took the data from, from Kegel. So you can actually go up there and also get the data. Okay, guys, so that will be it for today. And I believe that was great. And if you learned anything and you like the video, just click the like button and share with friends. And you don't want to miss out on subsequent videos that will be coming your way. So ensure that you subscribe and click on the notification bell so once a new video comes up you'll be the first to get it because you don't want to miss any of the videos that'll be coming up much later so once again thank you very much for spending time with me and see you in my next video bye